Hey, it's Smokey, welcome back. Last week on Instagram, I posted the video you are currently seeing as a teaser for a guitar mod project I've been working on. And this week, I wanna take you through those modifications and show you what I did. The first two mods I did on this guitar were installed immediately after I got it, so therefore they didn't make it into this video, but I'll cover them real quick. Mod the first is a set of 18 to one ratio Goto locking tuners. Locking tuners clamp your strings inside the string post, eliminating the need for string windings. This greatly improves tuning stability and has no negative consequences to your tone. So I believe that any guitarist that takes their craft even slightly seriously is doing themselves a huge disservice by not installing these. They make string changes infinitely faster and can improve tuning stability more than almost any other modification. And mod the second is a simple set of Dunlop strap locks. All these do is keep my straps safe and secure on my guitar so if I ever want to play standing up, there's no fear of dropping it. Let's get to the good stuff. I tend to begin these projects by laying out every component I'm going to be installing, as well as any tools that I'll require to get the job done. In this case, the bulk of the heavy lifting is going to be done by my Ernie Ball Musicians Toolkit, with some support for my Music Nomad Setup Kit after the modifications are complete and it's time to set the guitar up. It's not shown in the current clip, but off screen I also have a drill and a Dremel tool in case I need to modify any components to fit on the guitar. As for the actual modifications, I'll be installing a set of bare knuckle Ragnarok pickups, a custom made wiring harness with a volume tone and five way blade switch, some machined aluminum knobs and pickup rings from Anomaly Guitar Hardware, a Goto 510FX7 hardtail bridge, and I'll be shielding the pickup and control cavities with a Stumac copper shielding kit. So the first thing we have to do is remove the current set of strings as well as all of the existing hardware. Since I am going to be restringing and setting the guitar up once all of the mods are installed, I'm not super concerned about keeping these strings, so I'm just going to clip them. The next step is going to be removing the switch tip and knobs. This can be a bit of a frustrating step as both of these are held on by friction, but since I'm not going to be keeping Keeping either of these components and they will be replaced, I don't mind just grabbing them with a set of pliers and yanking them off. Next, I'm going to measure the height of the pickups I have currently installed. While the pickups I'm replacing them with will have a different output and may need some adjustments, getting them in the same ballpark will save me a lot of headache down the road. Once this is done, it's time to find the driver bit of the correct size so as not to strip my screws, and then I can begin removing my pickup rings. After that, it's time to back out all of the hardware that's holding my electronics in, remove the cover for the output jack, and then open up the control cavity. Since I'm going to be replacing the wiring harness that's currently in there, as well as the pickups, I decided to just clip the pickup conductor wires right where they're attached to the potentiometer so I can get everything out. If you intend to keep any of the hardware that you're currently removing, I would suggest desoldering these items instead. Once everything is clipped and removed, I decide to blow the wood shavings out of all of the cavities with a can of compressed air. This ensures that all of the surfaces are clean when it comes time to shield the cavities with copper tape. Next, I begin backing out the bridge saddle so that I can access the screws that hold the base plate to the body of the guitar. Before removing the bridge from the body, I place a piece of yellow masking tape right along the leading edge of the base plate. This will not only provide a guide for the forward edge of my replacement bridge, but also allow me to make measurement markers with pencil on the masking tape itself. This is a vital step in ensuring that the replacement bridge I install is centered. Once my preparations are complete, I can go ahead and remove the original bridge and begin pulling the saddles off of the base plate for the replacement bridge. Keeping the saddle set to the side for the time being will not only allow me better access to the mounting screws, but also allow me to make more accurate measurements without the saddles getting in the way. Once the base plate is stripped, I can start to make the measurements I need in order to keep it centered. After that, it's a simple matter of marking where I need to drill the holes, removing the base plate, and then proceeding to drill them. Keep in mind that this is not necessary for most bridge hardware, as most bridges are a drop-in fit, but in this case, I chose to go with something that needed some modification. Once the base plate is installed, I give it another blast of compressed air to clean the surface and then double check my final measurements. It's important to be vigilant about keeping your base plate centered, as any deviation from the factory specifications can mean your guitar won't intonate correctly when it comes time to do the setup. After the base plate is installed, I can go ahead and mount the saddles to it. Note that I'm placing a thin rag on the lacquer as well as using a long handled screwdriver in order to not scrape anything. After the bridge is installed, it's time to move on to shielding the pickup and control cavities. The process is as simple as laying the copper tape over the cavities and tracing their shape. Once the shape is transferred, you can go ahead and cut it out and then stick it to the bottom of the cavity. This process is even easier for the sides as all you have to do is measure the depth of the cavity and then cut one even strip. Ensure that each route is completely covered in copper and there are no gaps in your taping. The purpose of this is to create a Faraday cage around your electronics. This protects your electronics from outside interference, but can only be achieved if there's no break in the shielding. I choose to do this with copper foil because it provides a thicker and more robust solution than the typical shielding paint used in guitar manufacturing. In order to ensure that the conductor wires for my pickups can still travel through their factory routes, I use a bamboo skewer to pierce the copper where applicable. 
Upon attempting to install the pickups, I noticed that the mounting legs were a bit too wide for the pickup cavity. Not to worry though, it seems as though they're only one or two millimeters off, so this is easily rectified by grinding the tabs down with a Dremel tool. The wires are then fed through the factory routes, and the pickups are laid into their cavities. After that, it's a matter of mounting the pickups to their rings, setting the initial heights, and then affixing them to the body to snugly keep the pickups in place. Once the pickups are secure, we can confidently flip the guitar over without fear of losing any hardware, and then begin stripping the wires so we can connect them to our harness. When installing your electronics, be sure to keep a wiring diagram in front of you so you don't get lost. Bare Knuckle, Seymour Duncan, DiMarzio, and Fishman all have wiring diagrams available on their website for a wide variety of pickup and control configurations. Make sure you have one of these ready before you begin any mod project that involves electronics. Once the connections are made, we can reinstall the control plate and flip the guitar back over. And since we're going to be stringing up soon, I like to take the time to hydrate the fretboard. Keep in mind that this is only necessary with ebony and rosewood fretboards and should only be done every four to six months depending on how dry your climate is. Hydrating your fretboard wood keeps it from cracking and ensures that your frets stay firmly in place and don't begin to sprout. Leaving the fretboard conditioner to soak for a while, I turn my attention to the bridge saddles and make sure that they're set to a rough initial height in order to make the future setup much easier. This guitar has a fretboard radius of 20 inches, and since the previous bridge was also set to this radius, I can simply measure the heights of the old saddles and use those as a baseline. This certainly won't get me to my final string height, but it'll make the setup process much, much quicker. Once my initial saddle heights are set, I can go ahead and clean up any excess fretboard conditioner that's left behind and begin slapping on a fresh set of strings. After the strings are installed, I like to set them close to the pitch that I want them to be by ear and then leave the guitar alone for a little while. This allows the neck to readjust to fresh string tension before we perform a setup. And just like that, the modifications are done. The guitar still has to be set up and tuned, but we can save that topic for another video. I hope you guys found this helpful and I'll see you next time. Bye.